Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kelvin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and it's time for part two of my Boomsday Project card review. This time around, I have four new mechs that were just revealed, and a couple other cards I gotta catch up with that were kind of eased out over the last week or so. But some pretty exciting stuff. We're going to really understand exactly how Magnetic might work after taking a look at all of these and how good it might actually be. That said, of course, if you're short on time, you can hit the quick reviews in the link in the description. That'll just take you to my five-star ratings. Otherwise, we're going to jump into detailed reviews for all six of these cards. And up first here, I think we have the most exciting mech of them all. This is Zilliax, apparently Dr. Boom's personal bodyguard, a super cool looking mech. That is some fantastic artwork and a great design. And I think this will probably be the centerpiece neutral card for all the magnetic mech stuff happening in the Boomsday Project. This one was teased in a previous blog post. Looks so awesome, I can't imagine anything else being cooler than this one. And Zilliax, as you can see, a five mana three two mech has the magnetic keyword, of course, but also dumps quite a few other keywords here as well. Divine Shield, Taunt, Lifesteal, and Rush. So Corpse Takers are already super excited about this neutral option to buff them like crazy. Uh, but beyond that, there's really two ways to talk about this card, right? It's both as a minion itself, but also as a magnetic buff style card. So when you look at Zilliax as a minion, a 5 mana 3-2 probably doesn't excite you right off the bat. But despite that, I think there's so much stuff this card does that it might still be okay as a minion. I don't think it's fantastic, but it's probably playable in a pinch as a minion itself. I kind of think about this card like an Argent Commander with some defensive capabilities and also potential to operate as a buff as well, of course. Uh, but for 5 mana, you're getting this instantly active 3-2 minion that can take a trade into something so it's got that divine shield it can safely value trade the turn you play it it's got life steal so it's going to heal you a little bit it's got taunt so it lingers around as perhaps an awkward body a 3-2 that causes some problems for somebody right so it's instant it's defensive and a little bit you know not a ton of defensive potential as a minion itself necessarily but still can create some friction and problems for five mana this thing is gonna help you stay alive for a turn or two if you're just desperate to do that and i think it compares favorably to things like argent commander it doesn't have the offensive potential of argent commander but it's a mana cheaper it's got more life gain it's got some other potential tools and of course then in a mech deck you can expand on that value by using Zilliax as a buff as well. You can magnetize him to something, which, uh, again, gives you a lot of potential to work with here. So for five mana, if you compare it to other buffs in the game, it falls somewhere between, like, you know, Blessing of Kings and uh, Spike Ridge Steed, perhaps. But again, a lot of defensive value in this buff. If you have a minion on board... It doesn't even need to have initiative. It doesn't need to be awake. You can just play a minion right alongside Zilliac, some just big, dumb stat body, which we're going to see a few of. As long as it's a mech, you cast Zilliac, that thing's going to get rushed, and you can instantly heal for a ton of damage. You can instantly play a really big taunt minion. You can take a really strong value trade just real quickly to tease you a little bit. Something like War Gear, a 5 mana 5-5 five five, combined with Zilliax. You get this giant 8-7 thing that's healing you for 8 right away. Might heal you for even more if it takes return trades because it is a taunt. So yes, that's a 10 mana play or perhaps a 2 turn setup sort of play. But the potential still there for this thing to make really big impact packs and because it operates so quickly and it's active and it doesn't have to sit around passively like so many cards in Hearthstone that's usually a good sign for the playability of a card. Now we did learn in the video that revealed Zeliax that uh, classes getting magnetic mechs are going to be limited to Hunter, Paladin, and Warrior. So not every class is necessarily going to be able to utilize this thing successfully. Of course, there are some neutral mechs, but they probably won't have enough tools to make the magnetic aspect of Zilliax uh, competitive enough to really carve out a space in a given deck. So I don't think anybody's going to want to run this as a minion specifically. But nonetheless, if you have to play it as a minion in a mech deck, I think it's okay. It's a reasonable play. Not a good one, just a reasonable one. And then, of course, the potential for this thing 
as a buff and an activation and just stacking up all kinds of crazy mech value in a mech deck means it's going to be played in any sort of deck that relies on magnetism that goes for that mech line, of which I assume one will probably be somewhat competitive at the very least. Generally, Blizzard doesn't design an entire you know, multi-class mechanic that fails, although that said, they kind of did with hand buffing in the past for the same three classes, so who knows, it may not stick. But I think since it's the theme of the expansion, they're gonna tweak the power levels to make something like Zilliax a, a relevant and uh, important card in those environments. So that said, I think this is a solid card, not an amazing card, but certainly has the potential to be played, can operate in a few different ways works instantly which is very important for cards that want to work well in hearthstone has defensive potential uh, has value trades all of the stuff you might like so i'm pretty high on zilliax i think this is a neat little mech and a cool looking centerpiece i do wish the stats were a little bigger of course because he looks so big and awesome but nonetheless uh, a card that i'm pretty fond of so now let's move on and talk about some of the builder style mechs, the mechs that are going to be the, you know, the core building blocks for magnetized decks. Up first here we have the upgradable frame bot, a two mana one five, and you can see here he's a tiny little guy, but he's already got one upgrade apparently with this giant arm. That kind of makes him look like he should be a five one, but perhaps that arm can only be used defensively. That's like a big shield arm and he's punching with the tiny little arm on the other side. Who knows? But uh, the idea here is this is the perfect base to magnetize with other minions. You drop your Zilliax on this thing and suddenly you've got a 4-7 rush divine shield taunt lifesteal minion. That's kind of crazy. That's a really good 7 mana minion that stacks a lot of stuff together. And more importantly I think than that is that upgradable frame bot is something that you can play on turn two, perhaps even turn one with the coin, and it's almost guaranteed to survive. It's, it's so difficult for decks to kill a five health minion that early in the game. So if you're playing a more aggressive or more mid-range style of a mech deck, which I assume most of them will be more mid-rangey based on what we've seen thus far, this just gives you that base where you, on turn three, you're pretty much guaranteed to have something there for your magnetic play if you want to make it. So it's just this perfect follow-up. And then if they can't answer that, you've got to follow up on turn four and you start building this stackable resource. Now, eventually that would become susceptible to silence, but there are all kinds of different ways you can play these magnetic minions. So you can split your resources as necessary, but it's just a good start. And that's going to be really important for these decks, I think, to snowball into any sort of advantage and give them the necessary options. Also, even if you get this thing in the late game, like I said, combining it with something like Zilliax on turn seven, if you draw an upgraded, upgradable frame bot on turn seven, that's fine. You're just gonna be able to stack those stats right in and because Zilliax has rush, upgradable frame bot becomes instantly activated, which is nice. You get to put those stats into play immediately. Now, of course, this card itself does not have magnetic, so you can't use this as a follow-up. It's gonna have to be something that you play down first and magnetize if you like. That's a little bit of a downside, but ultimately, as long as your deck has a nice balance there of enough magnetic stuff and enough bases, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. The value of this card as an early game deterrent, an early game survivability tool that builds on everything else, that's where this thing succeeds. Not to mention the fact that a 1-5 minion right now isn't terrible as we see Hearthstone with all the odd paladins out there. This thing can eat lots and lots of silver hand recruits, so that's not too bad either. Uh, so clearly an important piece for the magnetic puzzle. I think this is going to absolutely be played if a magnetic deck finds any sort of success at all. And in fact, I think this card will be an important foundation towards magnetic mech decks actually seeing play. I don't think they'd work nearly as well without these sorts of minions to build on. So I think this card is really, really good. It may not look exciting or strong. It's not going to win you games on its own necessarily but it's one of those fundamental pieces that supports this archetype that we're gonna see, hopefully, in the Boomsday Project, so a really strong card. And then up next here, we have another neutral mech. This is the War Gear, another super cool mech design, by the way. These mech artists are knocking it out of the park, as far as I'm concerned. This guy is a five mana, five, five mech, and he simply has the keyword magnetic. So whereas we saw a building block with the previous card, the upgradable frame bot, now I think we're seeing one of those follow-up pieces. This is a card that can theoretically be a building block. You can play this down as a 5-mana five 5-5. Five five. Clearly not the most exciting play in Hearthstone, but in a pinch, 
It's a serviceable minion that might lead into a Zilliax on turn six, for instance, to give you something big and crazy. So the flexibility here, very important for this card finding success. That's very, very nice. And other times it's like this, you know, bigger blessing of kings, essentially a five mana, five, five buff on a minion that's on board. And, you know, Blessing of Kings, a really solid card. And if you can hit an upgradable frame bot with a war gear, suddenly you have a 610 minion, and that's really big and scary. Now, it's not a game winning play necessarily. It's not the kind of thing that's going to go toe to toe with a control deck. But if you build this in a mid range environment, you're able to apply that pressure, continually stack up your minions. You've got a nice threat. So, war gear flexibility is great. Its combination with other mechs is strong. Uh, it's a blessing of king's card sometimes otherwise just a vanilla statted minion uh, the downside there is that it just doesn't do anything super exciting um, sometimes it'll feel like just a weak play if you're on turn five and you just have to play a five five you're not going to be all that excited about that sort of play so i don't think this card's going to blow anything out of the water by no means a five star card that's going to be deck defining or archetype defining just one of those puzzle pieces you put in there it works some of the time it's fine some of the time it's good it's got comparisons to favorable cards certainly nothing wrong with this card um, it's just a card that'll be tossed into mech decks as needed when they need to fill in that mana spot this thing looks like a suitable fit uh, so a, a, a good card solid card just not an amazing card in my mind and then up next here we have a warrior the first class specific of the magnetized mechs we're seeing in this review this is the beryllium nullifier a seven mana three eight mech this guy has magnetic as well and he also has the can't be targeted keyword if you will uh so not getting hit by spells or hero powers anytime soon now i will say i think this is the weakest of the mechs that we've seen so far the problem with Beryllium Nullifier for me is just that he has a very, very high cost total. Seven mana is a lot. When you're looking at cards that have that nice flexibility of being a minion or a buff, and when you're looking at playing multiple things together to utilize all of those buffs in a single turn, as you creep up that mana cost, it seems like they're going to be harder and harder to fit into a given turn or to play with some flexibility. So for instance, you can't play Beryllium Nullifier and Zilliax together on the same turn. You could if you got to 10 mana and had two five drops, that's a fine thing, you could do that. Beryllium Nullifier, you just don't have that option. So if you're using this as a magnetic attachment, as a buff, most of the time it's probably only gonna happen if you had something on board already. Now, obviously those instances will occur in mech decks. The question is, is that additional buff gonna make the card way 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 better and of course gaining eight health and gaining a can't be targeted keyword are both really good at keeping a minion alive but there are still a lot of problems there the minion is still very susceptible to single target removal with like battle cries like um Vile Spine Slayer, still very susceptible to full board clears and wipes like Twisting Nethers, still susceptible to silence. Silence can really work through these sorts of things. Not to mention the Brilliant Nullifier itself doesn't actually have like taunt, so it's not going to make that minion defensive. So if you know you have this one big stack to minion on board, your opponent is playing a wide base deck and they're trying to kill you, what do you do? You buff your guy, but you're just kind of sitting there with a big tall minion that your opponent ignores. And like, yes, maybe you can hit them in the face for 10 damage because you've stacked up a big mech, or maybe you take some trades, but just one righteous protector or something is going to completely stall out this sort of play. So without giving this some sort of really immediate impact, I just don't know why Beryllium Nullifier is going to be good. When I compare this to something like Spike Ridge Steed, for instance, as a buff, you know, that's a 2-6 buff that has a defensive element. It has a death rattle that feeds back in as well as another defensive element. And it, it gives it that stickiness and that survivability aspect. And that's what makes Spike Ridge Steed so good. Brilliant Nullifier just doesn't have that. It's not all that different from a stat standpoint. And it doesn't have taunt. So I, I just don't know who wants to use this and why. Are you trying to keep a minion alive desperately so you value the can't be targeted? Are you wanting to play a 3-8 minion on turn 7? Because when you think about this as a minion, I would say it's as equally unexciting. It is a base you can build on with future mechs, but that's probably going to happen a turn later. 
ultimately I think it all just comes back to that mana cost and that really scares me and it just seems like it's gonna be awkward and hard to fit this thing into turns and fit it into decks in a way that makes a lot of sense so uh, there are certain elements here you can pick out that are positive about this card I'm not saying it's completely unplayable there might be some deck or environment that somehow squeezes this thing in or makes it fit or there's some specific combination with like a three mana mech that's perfect but ultimately it, it feels like this isn't very good as a follow-up it isn't very good as an independent minion it's not that good as a buff in the first place and it's only good in specific sort of single minion plays and those seem so darn susceptible and probably not all that good that beryllium nullifier doesn't have the same sort of flexibility that the rest of these magnetic mechs have making it to me the weakest one we've seen so far and probably just a tad too awkward to ever really see a much play at all so now let's move uh, beyond the mechs into some cards i hadn't talked about previously these are a few days older i didn't want to do review for just one or two cards so i've been holding on to these up first is the menacing nimbus a new shaman elemental minion two mana two two battle cry add a random elemental to your hand and when it comes to menacing nimbus this is just like the most okay card ever uh, i i don't think this card is gonna ever change hearthstone or or completely redefine a deck or create some new reason to play elemental shaman but of course it's totally fine two mana two two is an okay stat line that's fine to get you moving onto the board the battle cry is more value oriented as opposed to tempo or board oriented so that shifts the design of the deck a little bit more towards a longer game or at the very least a more mid-rangey style as opposed to an aggressive style so that's important so in other words it's more uh, servant of Kalamos than it is blaze caller right it's more about adding resources to your hand as opposed to affecting the board immediately uh, so that's uh, sometimes good for shaman sometimes bad depending upon the design of the deck but clearly a more value oriented shaman deck could do that and occasionally you're going to hit Kalamos off this you're going to be super pumped that you got an extra Kalamos. occasionally you're going to hit firefly and you're probably okay with that but it's really not the best play in the world so that babbling book kind of line just upgraded a little bit here into two mana and random elementals are they better than random mage spells some of the time sure if your deck is synergizing that's great having cheap elementals is really good to keep the elemental chains going at any given turn and of course adding element your hand adding elementals to your hand does the same thing helps you keep up the consistency of your elemental activations so you know the kind of card that's going to be great in arena just to get things rolling and keep your hand full of good stuff uh, less exciting and constructed but certainly still very playable i can imagine this being played in any shaman deck even if it's not elemental it's just a fine card anything would be happy to see this it's okay it's not amazing just really really good fine solid hearthstone card so uh, this one will see some level of play somewhere along the line and then finally, one last card here. This is Stargazer Luna, the mage legendary minion, a scientist for Dr. Boom. This is a 3-mana 2-4 with a pretty neat effect. After you play the rightmost card in your hand, you draw a card. So this card, it's been out for a while. You probably had a lot of time to think about this one. I'll try to keep it relatively short. Play Stargazer Luna onto the board. Whatever the rightmost card into your hand is, you play that, and she draws you a new card. And then if you can play that new card instantly, she's going to draw you another card. And if you can play that card instantly, she's going to draw you another card. So you get into this essentially top deck chain that if you're able to keep playing your top decked card, Stargazer Luna is going to create some ridiculous amounts of uh, value by adding card after card after card into your hand. And sometimes perhaps uh, creating lots and lots of damage potential. Because if you build your deck in the right way, and you run a lot of low cost cards, particularly those that are easily played at any given moment, Stargazer Luna could chain into lots and lots of cards. And frankly, looking at the card as a three mana two four, that's an okay three mana stat line. Certainly not great, three four would be the, the staple standard. But really, if you just get one card off Stargazer Luna, it's not a bad play necessarily. Like that would be a, if it was just a three mana two four that said draw a card, that'd be something you'd run in a lot of mage decks that'd be very strong and just a consistent cheap card draw that gets you moving in the early game as she starts to draw two or three or god forbid even four cards sargazer luna is off the charts good that's completely crazy the problem of course is that that's not always going to work first off 
there's some weirdness with lining up the initial Stargazer Luna turn. Because you might not have a cheap card on the right hand side of your deck. And you may not have the ability to combo together three mana with whatever that card costs. Uh, alternatively, if your deck runs anything that's relatively expensive, as you start to get into four mana, five mana cards, it becomes really hard to play those top decks and chain out those top decks. So your Stargazer Luna could backfire pretty often, and there could also be instances where she's just sitting in your hand while you're waiting for the right turn to play her. That said, if you build, you know, a burn mage that just runs a ton of cheap stuff, even thinking about a, a deck like Murloc Mage, which is a very fringe playable deck right now in Hearthstone, it would probably be a good fit. You have a ton of cheap Murlocs, you have some cheap spells, and you could just keep moving things together. Play a one mana Murloc, play a two mana Murloc, play a Frostbolt, play a one mana Murloc, and you could build this board and just keep refilling your hand. So if the deck is structured in the exact right way, there are going to be big hitting turns for Stargazer Luna. It'll be that sort of extra Aleneth in your deck that just draws you a ton of stuff, but at least in a little bit more of a controlled fashion. So I could see this making the cut in that kind of deck. Is this going to make it into every mage deck? No, I don't, I don't think so. The downside, the risk is, is too high. Well, it's not really a risk, but at least the, the lack of upside is is too high often this would just be an average mediocre sort of play and in other times the opportunity cost would be too strong because she's just a dead card or sitting awkwardly or you can't really find a time to play her now i will say that a card like this is something that has a sort of soft taunt in other words your opponent feels very compelled to kill it and that can be a nice tool as well in a deck like that if they you know if they have to kill your stargazer luna instead of say like a murdlock tide caller that has three or four attack and you can use that to snowball so clearly some great things happening in this card. I think it does have potential. I just think not every deck's going to run it. Uh, it's going to be hard to find the right fit. It may not happen right away, but somewhere down the line, somebody's going to make this thing crazy, and it's going to be frustrating because they're going to draw like six cards against you, and they're just going to like Frostbolt you, Arcane Missiles, Frostbolt, Arcane Missiles, Fireball you for the win because of Stargazer Luna, and uh, that's going to be a highlight. I'm sure it'll happen to me on day one, so <laughs> keep an eye out for the YouTube clips of that. Uh, nonetheless, the kind of card that, again, not the best card we've seen, but a playable reasonable Hearthstone card that will find a home. And there you go, guys. That's it for part two of my Boomsday Project detailed reviews. Now what I'd like to do is run through each of these and give them a rating from one to five stars in my quick reviews. Ziliax is a four-star card. Upgradable Framebot is a four-star card. War Gear is a three-star card. Beryllium Nullifier is a two-star card. Menacing Nimbus is a three star card. Stargazer Luna is a three star card. And there you have it, guys. What do you think? Are mechs going to make the cut? Is Magnetic a cool enough keyword to see play? Is Ziliax good or terrible? What do you think about Stargazer Luna? Share all those thoughts in the comments below. Tell me how I'm wrong. Tell me how I'm right. I want to hear all of your insights. You guys always have lots and lots of cool things to say. But until then, thank you so much as always for watching. And until next time... Game on.